Welcome to Between the Lines. Coming up on today's show, we sit down with the women's volleyball team, take a look back on some sports that happened over the weekend, take a break at halftime and learn a new sport, and finally spotlight a KU athlete. Stay tuned. Welcome to Inside the Locker Room. I'm your host, Hunter Valky. Joining me today is Coach John Gump and Allie Henderson of the women's volleyball team. Thank you guys for sitting down with me today and for joining us. Coach Gump recently celebrated his 600 win as a volleyball head coach. This is currently his 23rd season at the Kutztown University. What's it like being around a sport for so long? Well, the first thing is that my career at Kutztown is older than any of my players, mm -hmm. you know, which is always an interesting perspective that when I, when I started here, um, none of the current players were, were born. Um, you know, I've been fortunate um, to find a place where, where I feel like I fit, where I'm comfortable, um, and, and you know, through the course of my time here, to work with so many really talented student athletes you know, who, who really make the job enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, what's changed in the athletic department since you joined here at Kutztown? Uh, we, we, we've grown. Um, in a lot of respects, um, in a facility standpoint, in a staffing standpoint, you know, we, we've added a significant number of sports since I started here. Mm -hmm. um, and really that's been the case across the conference too. Um, the, the competitiveness of, of Kutztown as an athletic department and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference as a whole has really improved in the time that I've been here. Now through those 23 years, I'm sure you made a lot of good memories. Do you have one that sticks out to you more than most? You know, it, it's, hard, it's hard to think of to think of one, um, you know, there's, there's some that jump out. You know, the, the first division title, first NCAA win, are, are are ones that jump out. But really, it's it's the ongoing relationship with players that you've mm -hmm. coached during the years um, that really is the thing that's most important. I think. Now, what's this team look like in comparison to the previous years? We're we're still finding our way a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we we've we've got some really talented kids. Um, at times, we've we've looked really really good. We're still, you know, trying to find that consistency that I think w once we do will, will allow us to be um, successful. Mm -hmm. Now, would you say that the team is more offensive or defensive oriented this year? You know, I, this is one of our more balanced groups. Mm -hmm. I think um, it, our offense, I think, is better this year than it's been in the past couple of years, and our, and our defense has been has been um, really solid. I've been really pleased with how we've played defensively this year. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that, Allie? Would you say you guys are more defensive or offensive oriented this year? I completely agree with Coach on this one. Um, I think we have a really balanced team. Um, we have a lot more weapons, I think, this year than a couple of the previous years that I've been here. Um, and I think our defense has been really solid even for the last couple years. Now, what does your practice schedule look like on a weekly basis? So it's pretty consistent week to week, um, but it changes from day to day. Uh, so sometimes we have more skill-based practices on mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Wednesdays are our live practices, so we play six on six for the whole practice. Now, I used to be a volleyball player in high school and stuff like that. And I remember the one drill that I hated to do was diving drills because I'm such a big person, and that's not one of my things. Is there anything that you guys as a team don't like? There's a certain drill that you don't enjoy doing that is more difficult than the rest that gets under your skin a little bit? Yeah, so the one drill that we have that's infamous would be two-court run-throughs or sometimes even three-court run-throughs. Uh, mm -hmm. It involves a lot of running. Uh -huh. <laughs> Now, you, this year you're the team captain. What responsibilities come with that? Yeah, so myself and my co-captain, Holly Owen, um, a lot of our responsibilities that we have are um, team communication from the team to coach, um, communicating different announcements, uh, different stuff about um, games and practices and that sort of thing, um, and then leading the team on and off the court. Now, would you say you're more of a vocal person or you're more of a quiet person as the leader of the team? I think I would consider myself more of a, a quiet, more of a lead by example type of leader. Um, Holly tends to be the, the more vocal leader, I would say. 
Now, last year you finished with the season with 102 digs. This year you're already at over 150. What did you do during the offseason to upgrade your game and make it a little bit better on defense? Um, I absolutely trained in the weight room. Um, that was the majority of what I did in the offseason, and a lot of that had to do with what we did in the weight room with Kevin last spring mm -hmm. and um, just the training we did over the summer. Now, what do you, now, both of you, what would be your favorite thing about the sport of volleyball? For me, it's it's the ultimate team game. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for one person to take over a match in volleyball. Setters depend on passers. Hitters depend on setters. Th there's such an interconnectedness to all the skills that, um, to me, it's it's really the ultimate team sport, and that's what I really like about it. How about you, Allie? I really like that uh, each play is its own individual point. Um, the previous play doesn't affect the uh, the future coming play, and you can kind of reset between each play and um, make each point its own. What kind of emotions do you go through at the beginning of a match now? There's a lot of different things. You know, I've been doing this a long time. You still get a little bit nervous mm -hmm. before every match. You're running through a lot of different things in your head. You know, did we prepare as well as we could? Are we ready? You know, so many different things running through your head. And then once the match starts, it's strange. You just get so focused on what's happening all that stuff goes away mm -hmm. as, as soon as the first whistle blows and the first serve is put in play. How about you, Allie? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, it's interesting the way that our conference is set up that we get a full hour before we start the actual match to warm up. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the anticipation builds and builds and builds. And then as soon as that first serve is served, um, that all kinds of goes away and you're just able to focus on the point at play and um, focusing on what's next. Now, Ellie, you are a defensive player. If you could change your position, what p position on the court would you want to play? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. The one position I've really never tried was setting. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be something that's pretty cool. To what do you think makes setting so difficult of a, a, a position on the volleyball court? Uh, setting, being a setter is kind of like being a quarterback of the volleyball team. Mm -hmm. So you're running the offense on the court, and you're in charge of making sure that the hitters know what they're supposed to be doing um, in quick decision making. Mm -hmm. Now coming up, your next game is against, your upcoming game is against Seton Hill. How do you guys feel about this upcoming game? Well, they're the defending conference champion. Um, they're, they're solid. Actually, this morning, I've spent four or five hours looking at video and, mm -hmm. and starting to really get focused in on them. Um, they're, they're an athletic team that likes to play as fast as they can. Um, and they'll present some challenges. Mm -hmm. How about you, Allie? What do you think about this upcoming matchup? Absolutely. Just based on the last couple years that I've played here, um, Seton Hill is always a really tough competitor. I think it'll be a really fun match. Well, that's all the time we have today for Inside the Locker. And once again, I'd like to thank my guests, Coach John Jump and Allie Henderson of the women's volleyball team. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Want some new KU merch? Keep your eyes on the ball. Every Monday after a home football game, you get an additional 5% off all Kutztown apparel at the KU Campus Store for every touchdown we score, starting at 15%. Win or lose, that's 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 40% off all Kutztown apparel. The sale can be used in-store or on the website, kubstore.com. everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Weekend Update. I am your host Stephen Weiss along with Hunter Veliki. Welcome back from uh, fall break everybody. Hope you had a good couple days off but we have a lot of sports action to get into so let's jump into it right away with football. They were finally back home this weekend um, after a long stretch on the road. Um, back at Andre Reed Stadium versus East Stroudsburg. Two unbeaten teams walked into Andre Reed Stadium on Saturday afternoon but Abdul Hassan Neblet quickly and empathetically showed that 21st ranked Kutztown would be the only one leaving that way. Yeah, so behind the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, its most dominant offensive line, Neblet found the, edge, the left edge and raced for 69 yards for a touchdown on Kutztown's first play from scrimmage. And uh, the Golden Bears would continue to score uh, at will throughout the first half and uh, dealt visiting um, East Stroudsburg its first loss of the season. Now Neblet provided his third 100 yard rushing effort of the season with a career high of 109 yards on 10 carries. And um, Colin DeGobble also had another great game accounted for four touchdowns and more than 230 yards of total offense including uh, the 142 passing yards that he had and um, 
three on three touchdowns of he was 13 uh, for 17 passing while also picking up 93 yards and a score on 21 carries. I mean, just his mobility on the ground is is incredible, not just keeping himself mm -hmm. in the pocket, being able to move around and create offense for this team. Now, Jerry Cap also caught a pair of touchdowns throughout the day there, too. As long as uh, Sean uh, Turber Ortiz was overall all over the place with 11 tackles throughout the game. Uh, the Golden Bears are also guaranteed a six consecutive winning season with this win. Um, through their eyes on much, uh, their eyes are on much bigger um, goals here. Um, now, see, that's a question I have for you now. What should they, being undefeated at this point in the season, what should Pittsburgh be looking at here? Should they be? thinking championship in their head, or they should be the next game mentality? Well, certainly I'd say that they are probably very confident at where they sit right now, looking at themselves in the standings being 6-0. and mm -hmm. But um, you look at these games, each individual game, you break it down, you look at the statistics, you watch the film. Um, Sure, they're six and zero, but each game they go into like they need to come out of it being one and zero. I don't know. I'd have to agree with you too. Yeah. I just, you know, understand that yes, you're six and zero and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. next week you still have to go play next week. Yes. Before you move on to the following. Week. Right, and their next game is at Lock Haven um, next Saturday for a PSAC East game. Kickoff is at three. But like we were saying, you know, I, I think that each game they sort of go in and focus on mm -hmm. that game, what they need to do to beat that team, and. Just come, like I said, with that 1-0 mentality going this week. It's a new game every week. No yes. matter what you do, it does yeah. a different opponent each week. You need to play differently Yeah, and I think, that, I think they've shown that. I mean, just look at them. Six with a big old goose egg in the loss column. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But next, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about women's field hockey. A couple of games this week, I believe. Um, they were at number six, Shippensburg, and they suffered a loss 3-1. to Sixth-ranked six Shippensburg scored uh, three uh, second half goals, including the game winner with 3.48 remaining in the fourth quarter to shock the fifth ranked Kutztown University field hockey team 3-1 in a PSAC conference matchup Saturday evening. Now, Leah Roselli, uh, fourth goal of the season, put Kutztown on top in the 26th minute, but it came only two shots from the Golden Bears in the opening half. Yeah, uh, and Mackenzie Furman picked up her team leading six assists of the year on Roselli's marker. And then uh, earlier in the third uh, third quarter, Shippensburg, who is seven and four, they're a really good team. Like we said, they mm -hmm. are uh, ranked number six now. Um, uh, even the score on Jasmine Pen Antonio's uh, PSAC leading 15th goal, she leads uh, all of the, the Pennsylvania State mm -hmm. Athletic Conference in goals. So now the game would remain tied deep into the fourth quarter until uh, Petrino uh, found uh, Jenna Slur Slurmer off the corner for the uh, go-ahead goal. And then uh, Adriana McGargle added an insurance goal into an open cage with 102 remaining to seal the victory uh, for the host. Ship average and early season non-conference loss to KU at Andre Reed Stadium with Saturday's result. Kutztown returns, Kutztown returns home for a pair of games this coming week. It will face Millersville in a PSAC game on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and go out of conference to take on Mercy Thursday at 7 p.m. All right, now let's keep things moving along here with women's soccer. Two games this week. Um, the first one was at Lock Haven. Um, they got a, they picked up a nice win here, three to one. Senior defender Kaylee Kupiak scored her first goal of the season, which provided to be the game winner. As uh, the KU women's soccer team uh, recorded three unanswered goals to come from behind to defeat Lock Haven's uh, University's three to one Wednesday afternoon in a PSAC East Division game. Yeah, Gabby Kane and Maggie Cersei uh, were the other goal scorers for the Maroon and Gold who outshot Lock Haven 20 to 9 overall, 10 for 6 on goal, which was a very stellar performance, it seems like. Yeah, and then they had another game at Westchester, another big game, uh, but unfortunately they suffered a loss 2 to 1. Uh, junior forward Rachel Rizzo tail tallied her first goal of the season, the game's opening goal, but eighth ranked Westchester scored two in a row to come back and defeat KU 2 to 1. Uh, Saturday afternoon, so unfortunately a loss, but um, I think they're they're really keeping themselves on mm -hmm. track. The Golden Bears five and five overall had a uh, two-game win streak uh, snapped by the Golden Rams, and what continues to be a very competitive East Division this season. Yeah, I mean they've had they've had um, their their fair share of shots. I mean just every game I feel like they they have um, really battled pretty hard. Uh, you you never see them sort of trail off. They always keep their chins up. They they. Um, just continue to, I mean, I think, I believe they're five and five right now. So mm -hmm. keeping that clean slate, trying to get uh, back in that win column. Yeah, all five of their losses have come to teams that have been nationally ranked though so far. Yeah. So that's not a bad thing to happen yeah. to you. It really, if that's your worst case scenario, that's not too bad. Yeah, exactly. 
um, and Kusum will host Shepherd in its next game this Wednesday, October 16th at 3 p.m. at Keystone Field. And one final sport we're going to discuss today is men's rugby, who were at number eight uh, at the nationally ranked number eight Penn State, um, and they picked up a big win, 34 to 24. Now the seventh ranked Kutztown University men's rugby team scored the first 27 points of the match, and then held on to rally to earn up to a, a top 10 victory on, over the eighth ranked Penn State University, 24. 34 to 24 last Saturday at Penn State. Um, yeah, and I mean, just a just a really great win for the uh, KU men's rugby team. They continually to um, dominate teams, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for you today on Weekend Update. Stay tuned for more Between the Lines. It's on us. To make sure that everyone knows that if a partner doesn't or can't consent to sex, it's sexual assault. It's on us to step up and say something. To not give our friends a pass to always be on the side of the survivor. To realize we have a role to play in stopping sexual assault. It's on us, the Golden Bear community, to stop sexual assault. I took the pledge and you should too at itsonus.org. Hello and welcome back to this new edition of Halftime. I'm your host, Brady Weaver, and today on the show we have Haley Holsoppel and Sarah Williams trying to teach me how to play some volleyball. Let's see how that goes. So first off, I believe they're going to teach me how to do some passing and setting drills. Isn't that right? Yep. So first, when I teach you how to pass, you're going to put your hands out. You'll put one hand on top of the other. You'll fold your thumbs in, and then you'll swing your arms slightly. All right. Let's see how that goes. All right, well that wasn't that bad. Let's see how setting goes. So first when you learn how to set, you're gonna put your hands in a triangle shape. You're gonna wanna put them on top of your forehead. And then you make your hands like a ball shape, and then you just pull in your wrist and then release out. Like a follow through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You just gonna push it. All right. Let's get it. And now we're going to go to the hard part of volleyball, which is the hitting. So to begin hitting, it all starts with the approach. So you want to take left, right, left, and jump, and throw your arms up, and have your non-dominant hand guide you, like a bow and arrow, pull back, and swing through. That follow through, though. The follow through. Let's see how that goes. Now I'm going to use all the knowledge that I got today from these two ladies and um, put ourselves into a little competition and see which one's better. We're going to do a drill that we do in practice named Mary Jo. So what happens is there's two players across the net from each other and one setter and I'll be running underneath the net to set for both players and the goal is for each player to hit the ball at each other and try and score points. Alright, let's try it.
and that was a workout after today. But that happens in volleyball. I want to give a huge shout out to Haley and Sarah for teaching me today how to play some of it. This has been your host, Brady Weaver, on the new episode of Halftime. Back to you. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. My name is Haley Holzabel. I am a junior. I play volleyball, and I am a criminal justice major. I want to become a lawyer, but after I graduate, I'm going to become a paralegal so I can save money to go to law school. I do like April Ross in volleyball, but I love watching basketball and football, so I like watching athletes who display the game as more of a life challenge and getting through it. I did get recruited. I was recruited my senior year of high school. I chose Kutztown just because of the distance. Um, it's two hours away from my home, but it wasn't too far and it wasn't too close, and I just love the atmosphere of the campus. My favorite volleyball moment would be when we go to five every time we play Lockhaven, and we always win when we go to five with Lockhaven. We always uh, jam out to music, mostly uh, Baby Birkin in the locker room, and we always pray before every game. I think the opponent that is our biggest rival would be either ESU or UPJ. Qualities that make a great teammate would be that they are always there for you on and off the court, that they show passion and love for the game, that they, no matter how much they get into their head, how much they mess up, they always are there to pick themselves up or other people up on the court. I am a huge fan of Netflix and relaxing, but I also like editing pictures and videos and listening to music. I don't really have a style. I usually do more pictures. My roommate does more videos. Um, I like using different like throwing in different fonts and throwing in different backgrounds to make it look more vintage or more aesthetic like that. My inspiration for editing pictures, my roommate actually, she started it and she loves taking pictures so I kind of just popped on the bandwagon with her. My favorite show on Netflix would have to be New Girl or I also am a big fan of the Marvel movies that they put on Netflix but they're about to take them off. <laughs> my favorite movie would have to be The Breakfast Club. My favorite thing to do after a big win is eat. <laughs> we go to Panera Bread sometimes or Chipotle, so I would rather go to Chipotle than Panera Bread. <laughs> My worst volleyball memory would have to be when I was a freshman and I tore my ACL meniscus, my, our last home game, and I had to have surgery and I was out for a year. My greatest accomplishment would have to be coming back from my surgery after a year and being a starting player on the season. Yes, <laughs> I do. My sports-related superstition is I always have to have a scrunchie on my left wrist before the game, and I always have to wear that same scrunchie during the game. My crazy dream job would have to be moving to Brazil or somewhere in Europe and starting a company out there and just being that probably something that has to do with either clothes or probably editing pictures because I like doing that. My favorite place to eat on a Friday night is Tommy Boy's. Uh, my favorite thing to eat is honey barbecue donuts. Oh, my favorite kind of music would have to be either rap or pop or country. I listen to mostly anything. My favorite rapper, my favorite rapper right now would have to be either Travis Scott or Meek Mill. My favorite country artist would have to be Dan and Shay. My name is Haley Holsapel and I'm Player of the Week. My name is Anna Marie Benavania. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I couldn't wrap my brain around that I had cancer because I always thought you were going to die. And people think it's going to go away on its own and it will never happen. Are you aware? Well, that's all the time we have this week. 
Don't forget to tune in next week when we sit down with a cross country and track team. Remember, outside the lines, you only get the scores. But here, at Between the Lines, we get you inside the locker room.